talking about is the huge announcement by Benin President Patrice Talon, uh, who announced that the foreign reserves of West Africa's CFA uh, currency, which is basically used by eight countries in the region, was going to be moved out of France out of France. I even feel like saying it like 10 times. And back to Africa. So what they said is that um they were actually create, they were creating some kind of Western a regional central bank where the money would be housed, and they'd now be able to, you know, they'd be able to trade amongst themselves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is absolutely epic, absolutely epic. And does it symbolize the beginning of the end of France? Because you know, I mean, we know who was it? Was it Mitterrand? One of those three former presidents had actually said, um, I can't remember which one it was, had actually said that without. Africa, France would immediately dive into a third world country. But we know, guys, we know how France operates. We know how the Mzungu operates, divide and conquer. Because this story went on a media blitz. I mean, and what happened is that Benin president, Patrice Talon, he just gave an interview, guys. He was just like, you know, he was talking, of course, uh, to RFI um, and uh, France 24, uh, both are super big, you know, French uh, TV channels. And they were talking about a wide range of issues. But this kind of picked up the interest. And I always tell you, you know, whenever you see a story out of Africa making news, it's because that's what they care about. And they're sounding a warning. But things are shifting, guys. We're a new breed of Africa. I'm telling you, I didn't even think this would happen so soon. And, you know, there's been so much talk. And we also have to give a side shout out to, um, uh, you know, former Ambassador uh, Chihombori, because she's the one who really, really, as in, educated the global black nation about what was going on. And many people had talked about it. It. We also have to give out a shout out to the West African activists who have been talking about it. But guys, I really feel we must pray this through. We must support this with our spiritual energy and desire and make it a point of no return. Uh, because, you know, West Africa has been wanting to redefine this relationship. And it, it's just, and, and for so long, there's been so many traps, you know, and loopholes. Like, for example, because uh, this talk about moving back to the central bank, and you guys, you need to check it out. I think this is the show I'd done before on this. And basically what happens is that a majority of these nations, so there's eight countries, right? Um, they're under the Benin, Togo, Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Niger, and Niger and Guinea-Bissau. And they all have their money, like the national funds in French reserves, more than 65%. And this has con kind of caused friction. I remember there's a story I did earlier in the year where China was actually um, complaining about this setup because what happens is if you do business in Guinea-Bissau or in Togo or in Benin, you have to first deposit your money in France. Then France will take that money. Of course, I got, you think do anything for free. They'll charge you a little fee and then they'll forward the money that's needed. Usually it'll just go into the deposit of the nation, but the money that's needed will then be forwarded to the nation. But they keep the majority of the funds there. They're getting interest on them, etc., etc. So it's been, you know, it's been a real, real tug of war. And what has happened is, you know, there's allegedly been over 22 assassinations. Guys, I can't even speak. I'm so excited. You know, by the, allegedly, the French government in trying to control the region and the West African region, especially these small countries. They are among the poorest in Africa and the poorest in the world because of this crazy manipulation. But this is not the first time that these countries have tried this. They've tried to do this before, but every time they do this, they get crushed. So we better watch out for Patrice Talon because he came into power in 2016. We'd better watch out that, you know, this isn't something that's being, that he's not going to be a target now of, you know, French intelligentsia and maneuvering, uh, because there has also been a lot of um, upheaval in the Sahel Desert, which, uh, and, you know, a lot of these countries are around. Uh, and we also have to make sure that this is not a French thing, that this is not a Trojan horse. You know what I mean? I don't want to kill the moment, but yeah. So let's take a listen. I hope you understand French. We've tried to put in the closed captions. Let's take a listen to what the Benin president had to say. I'll share details. I'll speak a little French right after this. Wake up, Africa. C'est tout mon souhait que le président Bonnyaï rentre au Bénin. Le président Bonnyaï a été dix euh, euh, ans président de la République du Bénin, euh, donc responsable de notre devenu, de notre destin commun. Même s'il n'est plus dans la charge, 
euh, la noblesse de, sa, de la fonction euh, continue, doit continuer d'être pour lui un impératif. Et c'est pour ça que ce serait bien que le président Bonnie Yahi euh, rende. D'autant qu'aujourd'hui, plus personne euh, ne doit craindre les suites de son action à cause de l'amnistie. Donc, il n'a, même, il n'a plus rien à craindre, même s'il si, euh, euh, il avait des inquiétudes quant à, euh, au, à l'interpellation d'un juge sur ce qui a pu se passer. C'est, c'est, c'est fini. Wake up, Africa. Welcome back to the Dr. Mumbi Show. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I mean, the week has started on a high for global Africa with, you know, the West African nations coming out and saying that, the, you know, well, Benin president, Patrice Tenons, he announced, he said, you know, foreign reserves of the West African CFA would be leaving France and would be put in something, uh, you know, in a new central, um, like a new African central bank now, which would be called something like the West African and Central African. Owamu, I think, is what the, 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 the countries were called. And uh, since 1945, West African and Central African uh, CFA was basically pegged to the French franc. And then when France moved to euro, it was pegged in euro. And the reserves have been kept in France since 1945. Uh, so the Central African bloc that uses CFA. So I already mentioned the countries in West Africa. So the Central African ones are Chad, Central African Republic, Congo Republic, Gabon, Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Now, um, this move has kept African countries largely dependent on the EU monetary policy and has created a neo-colonial kind of um, domination and has really not made it possible for any African country to kind of realize their own or even map out their own individual dreams. Even their policies are affected. I'm telling you, this French thing, this French... um, West African situation or former French colony situation, it means that every single deal, whether it's an oil deal, a diamond deal, a ruby deal, has to be offered to France first before it's offered to anyone else. But we see a lot of countries wanting to re- to replace France in Africa. So that's what Russia, you know, with Central African Republic, they've kind of managed to dislodge, you know, dislodge France. We're seeing also, um, you know, China doing the same thing in West Africa. Now, the thing is, these guys are tricky, because in early October, the French finance minister very arrogantly said, uh, he's actually called Bruno La Marie or something like that. He actually said France was open to um, ambitious reforms of the CFA franc, um, kind of echoing Macron's words uh, a few years ago. So Macron, a few years ago, had been speaking to Beninois students at Benin University, and he had said that, you know, and someone had asked him about you know, the CFA and how it's, you know, detrimental to Africa. And you've seen how, I swear, Macron is kind of like, you know, I've called him many things, the antichrist of Africa. He's got this, he's always on this charm offensive, came out of nowhere, um, really understands Africa well, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, so he had come out and he had told the Beninois students that there would be radical reform and, and that things would change. So his finance minister, let me quote him, he said, you know, what I can tell you is that the president of the republic is ready for an ambitious reform of the franc zone. Uh, But I repeat, it is up to the member states. This is the trick, guys. This is, the, this is the, the fine print that we don't pay attention to. But I repeat, it is up to the member states of the franc zone to take the initiative, make proposals, and measure how far they wish to go. So it's like, yeah, take your freedom, but you guys get it together. And we'll see how it goes. So, of course, they don't want to do it. And, of course, you know, the reason they say this is because they interfere every step of the way, allegedly. Of course they do. So now they've heard these presidents, or the eight presidents have agreed. So now they'll go and they'll now try and see, you know, which one can we, which one can we bribe, which one can we manipulate, which one can we frame. Which one can we take out? I wonder if there's any upcoming elections, because that would that's a kind of maneuvering. Guys, the thing is, we have to understand the aggressor and the oppressor. He's not creative. He repeats the same thing. And that's why we're always told his, history repeats himself, you know, it, himself, right? Because <laughs> it, it literally is that. You know, history repeats himself. Quite, mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so, you know, we have to kind of understand that they always do the same thing. And that's why we must be students of history and we must make our children masters of history so that they know how the oppressor operates. 
So he was saying that, you know, um, the president, Talon, he said eight countries had unanimously agreed to end a decade-old financial model that saw the foreign exchange accumulation kept in French Treasury and basically, base, you know, benefited the French. Uh, and then, you know, so the French were trying to argue that the currency has actually artificially um, kept the regional currency strong and kept them competitive. But it's kind of kept, you know, it's kind of... No, it's kept them strong, but it's curbed regional competitiveness. So we've never seen the West take off like the way East Africa is where, you know, Kenya and Tanzania and Uganda and Rwanda and we're all competing and, and, and wanting the, the, the spotlight to shine on us. Uh, but I love what he said, and this is the most important thing. Uh, he said, you know, psychologically, we regard the vision of sovereignty and managing your own money. It's not good um, that this model continues. And that's basically what he was stressing, uh, that, you know, this model is just not good for the psyche of the people for the national psychology and it was no longer practical. So not only were they going to be creating a regional bank, but they will manage their reserves and the reserves will be distributed around the world to kind of edge out the, um, the risk. Uh, so they'll be put in Japan, Europe, China, and North America. Not sure if this is even a, a better solution, but as long as we break that initial cord with France, I'm happy. Guys, let's pray for West Africa and what they're trying to do. Send your positive energies. You know, pray to the Most High. Pray to the ancestors. Let's, let's really galvanize our power because each of us has that power within us. And let's, you know, push this to the finish line. It may be unexpected. It may have caught the French... Uh, kind of a sideline, you know, by shock, by surprise. But this could be 